Hello and welcome. Um, so the Mario movie had a trailer that came out, and it was pretty good. Indeed. Oh yeah, I'm Paul, by the way. And this is Dave. <laughs> so what did you think of the trailer, Dave? On whole, it looked pretty. And with most of the stuff that was said and shown off, it looks interesting. But it's still kind of a case of they never really showed much of the plot, which on some cases is a good thing. But in other cases, it's kind of, hmm, which direction are they going to take it? But with Bowser bringing his entire crew, destroying a giant ice kingdom, and Mario kind of coming to this world, it's kind of a case of, hmm, this might be action -y. That's probably good. Yeah, it the, it looked fun. Like, I think that's the biggest thing was I'm like, oh, this looks like it'll be a good a good time in the movie theater. Indeed. Like I'll I'll sit back with with a diabetic sized coke and a thing of popcorn and I'll very much enjoy my time with this. Indeed. Where in my case it will most likely be the same, but in the back of my mind I'll do my best not to shout bad words out to the screen for small little intricate things that no one aside from hardcore gamers would probably think is an issue. My only concern with this is, and I'm hoping that it's... Please don't make this movie two hours long. Please keep it to 90 minutes, Nintendo. Mm. It, it will not be good if it is two hours long. Mm. I suppose that's true. Uh, again, it's kind of that weird balancing act in most cases. Yeah, there's only a couple particular series that I could think of where they really kind of really push it. And it's kind of the case of, did you really need to push it that far? So in most cases, it should be good. But yeah, I could see your concern. Yeah, so the only reason I like, and I know that not everybody loves them and I've never actually even seen them. But like the, both of the Minions movies are right around 90 minutes. And I think that's kind of the sweet spot. It's understandable, especially with the company Illuminations animating most everything. Yeah, and they're the ones that did Minions, so... Yeah, yeah. Hopefully they, they stick around that kind of 90 minute... Um, 90 minute mark, but it looks fun, and we get a good look at Bowser in it, and I like the design of Bowser. And yes. uh, the Mario design is quite nice. Um, and the Mushroom Kingdom looks interesting, at least a little bit we see. Mm-hmm. Again... It's one of the particular things of they've definitely built and developed the Mushroom Kingdom, uh, definitely within certain respects, but it's nothing that's specifically concrete within the games, where from one to the other, it's not specifically the same, and it can change around, but you know, just looking at it, okay, this is the Mushroom Kingdom, it makes sense. Oh yeah, totally. Um, I do think that they took the Mushroom part of the Mushroom Kingdom a little too literally, but... That's just, it, it. That's for all we know. This is a thirty-second scene in the movie, and it'll be different in other parts. So I'm not that like. I can understand that, and I think that would most likely be the thought. Yeah. So I mean, it looks like fun, and I, I actually am kind of. This has actually given me a lot of hope that this movie won't be trash. I think it's just mostly the thought of. Hmm. Most of the people kind of online thinking this might be the next Marvel uh, animated universe, only with video game characters. I just, I mean, I could see Nintendo being very successful in movies, but I don't think it's going to be that, like, interconnected universe. Because Nintendo doesn't really do that much. It's true, but again, just with this either succeeding or whatnot, once it kind of gets out there where would they supposedly go with it aside from this one most likely getting a sequel what other franches could they dive into to supposedly moveify next uh i mean you could do the legend of zelda you could do metroid you could do what else do they have you could do like a fire emblem maybe you could do they have a bunch of stuff that they could go into i'm sure yeah, there's there's plenty of options. I just you're not gonna. I don't think you're gonna get even if it's very successful. I don't think you're gonna get like an Avengers style movie out of this. Hmm. Like there, there. It doesn't really work with doing like a big team up kind of film. 
No, I think the one particular thing I remember someone mentioning, a giant Super Smash Brothers movie. Okay, but how? Most likely somehow, but most likely it's just the ramblings of a random person on the internet. I, I thought of that, but I'm like, well, there's not really a plot to those games. Although, in all That's fairness... Really one thing. In all fairness, somebody is making a Tetris movie, so, you know, anything's possible. True. True. And on the one hand, I have not heard of this, that I'm not surprised. I'm mildly scared, but kind of the case of, hmm, how much silly this is going to be, because they did... Um, I wouldn't exactly say Pac-Man movie, but there was the Pixels movie. And that was kind of the case of, hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, okay, so the Tetris... Oh, okay. So the Tetris movie... I mean, I guess technically it's a Tetris movie, but it's not really, like adapting the video game so much as it's telling the story behind the game okay documentary style sort of thing uh no did you ever see the social network okay more, something like uh, that more okay with that there's one particular one um oh um it's more uh musician sort of style but there's a similar sort of thing coming out with um weird al yankovic movie Oh yeah, I saw that. Um, that I was like, really, that's gonna be a thing? Okay. Yeah, supposedly, and then of course they get oh, again just with the name. Um, uh, my apologies, but gentlemen who played Harry Potter in his younger years will be playing Weird Al. Yeah, it's uh, oh crap, what's his name? Um, Daniel Radcliffe. Thank you. Yes. Um, I I would like to see this movie be good, but um, for one, it didn't have a huge budget, which I mean that alone doesn't mean it won't be good. Uh, it was but it had an eight million dollar budget, which is quite small. But yeah, in that case, um, just to verify, this is Tetris or this is Weird Al? Oh, sorry, this is Weird Al. Okay, for that one. Uh, it has an $8 million budget, and it's being released on the Roku channel. So hmm. that makes me a bit nervous. Because um, I have they done original content before? <laughs> and, I mean... Yeah. Although, in all fairness, according to Rotten Tomatoes, it's getting very good reviews. Okay. So maybe it's actually going to be worth going to the Roku channel for. I have to see yeah. how I get access to that, because I have no idea. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's time to move into some spoopy things. Indeed. It is the month of the spoopies. It is the month of spoopies. So... Uh, I have pulled up a horror movie quiz here for you to take, Mr. David. Okay. Uh, there is, I want to say, 20 questions. I think 20. Let me just scroll down here. Yes, 20 questions. And uh, I haven't decided if you get a prize if you win or lose. So either way, you'll get some kind of reward. Um I will, however, because I know you're not a big spoopy movie person, uh, I will give you five lifelines where you can ask me for help. All right, yes. So if you, I, you can, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go. So I'll read the question to you. and There are multiple choice. There's three answers for each. So you tell me which one you think it is, and we'll find out. Okay. All right. Question easy. one. What is the... Easy. How you should. Uh, so, what is the name of the fictional serial killer in the Halloween movie franchise? So, your options are Jason Voorhees, Mickey Knox, or Michael Myers. Within the Halloween Within Hall franchise, Halloween franchise, I believe it was 
A, Jason Voorhees. Do you want to try that again, Dave? Pardon? Do you want to right, do you want to lock that in? Are you 100% sure? Oh, okay, for that. Yes, I'll go with A, Jason Voorhees for the Halloween. Oh, damn it, Dave. It no, it's Michael Myers. It was him. Yeah, Don't that's the trailers for advertising the new um Halloween movies and saying his name that immediately came to my mind. <laughs> okay. So question two. What is the name of the real life family who were murdered in the Amityville horror house? Uh the DeForest family, the DeFalco family, or the Defo family? Second one you said was the DeFalco? DeFalco, yes. Yeah, I'll go with that one, the DeFalco family. DeFalco? Uh, incorrect, it is the Defo family. That is one I would not have been able to answer, so... That seems a little bit too on the nose, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, question three. Which movie series is based on the real-life work of the famous demonologists uh, and fucking scam artists ed and lorraine warren your options are the conjuring paranormal activity or insidious again just with the question it was con artist uh no no i added the con artist part so i'll uh, read the question as it is which movie series is based on the real life work of the famous demonologists ed and lorraine warren And the first one was The Conjuring, or was that the C? No, A is The Conjuring, B is Paranormal Activity, and C is Insidious. Okay. Again, just with a little bit I know about each of those particular series, I think my best guess would be going with uh a the conjuring ding 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 very good correct okay now for this question you're gonna have to look at an image in chat which i'll send to you now okay uh in which supernatural horror movie did this creepy clown doll feature your options are poltergeist the conjuring or the amityville horror sadly i've only seen pictures and films of this particular guy from one particular series so i'm not sure if he appears in multiple and this is a trick question but i'll stick with the obvious answer and go with the uh, poltergeist very good we're getting somewhere here okay question five uh in the others and the daughter of nicole kidman's character claims to have seen the ghosts of a young boy in the house what did she say his name is so the options are Winston, Hugo, or Victor. Man, I got nothing for this particular one. None of the names are immediately striking when I know with this. I'll just take a stab at it and go with the B, Hugo. Hugo? That would be incorrect. It was Victor. It was Victor. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, number six. Uh, in The Conjuring... Or, sorry. The Conjuring 2 is based on which real-life British paranormal case? So your options are 30 East Drive, Pentafract, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, uh, Borley Rectory, or the Enfield Poltergeist. And just to remind you, you do have five lifelines where I can help you out. Again, I've got nothing. 
the very most would be the last one, but I'm not too knowledgeable with any sort of records from the event or the specific movie itself. That and I'm not sure what's sort of the case with the lifelines that you got on hand. I mean, you can bait, like, when I say lifelines, I'm saying, like, I will give you at least a big clue. Go with at least one of them, because I got nothing with this. Okay. Um, okay, I gotta think on how to phrase this so it's not too obvious. Um... Uh, the, okay, The Conjuring 2, Dave, is a ghost story. Supposing that's to be expected in those sorts of cases, but I believe that did kind of help. Uh, just with the options for the answers with this question? Yeah. Uh, oh. Which were they? Yeah, sir, sure. Uh, so 30 East Drive uh, Pentafract. Uh, Borley Rectory, or the Enfield Poltergeist? Yeah, it is C. Yes, it is the Enfield Poltergeist. Uh, okay, so what is the lead's character? What is the lead character's name in the Babadook? Clara, Amelia, Emily. Heard this particular one, but I'm trying to remember if they actually said the name in the trailer or anything like that. Uh, nothing's immediately coming to mind. What was the names again? Clara, Amelia, Emily. I might take a stab and just go with the uh, B, Amelia. Amelia is correct. Mm. Uh, number eight, what name does Reagan give to the demon she contacted on uh, a Ouija board in The Exorcist? So the options are Sir Stark, Mr. Duty, Captain Howdy. Of all the particular names you decided to go with, even with them not being it, that's kind of, hmm. Let's go ahead with calling a demon that for those. Hmm. What was the section? I'll, I'll actually go with uh, the answers again. Sure. So possible answers are Sir Stark, uh, Mr. Duty, Captain Howdy. Go with A, Sir Stark. Sir Stark is unfortunately incorrect. It was Captain Howdy. Yeah, just questionable with the names. Yeah, she's also like an eight-year-old girl. Or maybe maybe also she's a case of I have not seen the movies. You haven't seen The Exorcist? Not specifically that one, no. I think at the very most it would have been particular clips. Okay. Other things I know of the scene. Okay. It's no movie. Okay. So the classic line "I see dead people" features in which supernatural movie? The Sixth Sense. Stir of Echoes. What lies beneath? Now with this one, I believe it's the sixth sense. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Very good. Okay. Number ten. What did the gang of friends call themselves in Stephen King's It? The Losers Club, the Creatures from the Black Lagoon, the Barons. Um. 
Nah. It's there. It's out of most of the films I've actually seen this movie, but it's a case that I might need a, a clue to help kind of narrow it down. You want to cash in a lifeline? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Uh, so... Okay, they name their gang after how they're perceived in their high or in their school. They're very, they're very bullied. They're very much outcasts. Just so I could get the answers again for it, the Losers Club, the Creatures from the Black Lagoon, the Barons. hoping this isn't going to bite me in the butt but I'll go with the A answer the losers club very good again I'm not sure if you were being somewhat helpful with it or trying to be not sure if it's facetious but kind of semi helping giving me the answer but in a cryptic way I'm trying to I'm not I'm so my goal is to give you more information but not tell you the answer but, okay. but specifically, like, I'm trying to push you to the right answer without giving it to you. Okay, it's assisting. Because yeah. in my own head, it's kind of messing with it to try and get the different answers. Anyways. Uh, at the end of Poltergeist, what object from the motel room did the dad move outside? Even though the, the, the wrong syntax. Anyway, uh, a lamp, a fridge, a television. Again, remembering from the couple particular clips, I believe it w was going to be a television C. That is correct. Okay. Uh, number 12. What is the name of the character who becomes possessed by a demon in paranormal, in paranormal activity who kills her boyfriend, Micah? Options are Katie, Christy, Alex. Again, I know it from the clips, and it's fairly there, but it's a case of, I don't know these characters, or who's who. Mm. I'll tell you right now, don't cash in a lifeline on this, because I don't remember Paranormal Activity. <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> Katie... I'll maybe go with the opposite principle and go with um, Alex C. Alex is incorrect. Apparently it was Katie. Okay. Oh, we're getting to oh, we're getting to some good ones. Uh, okay. Thirteen. Who followed Lewis to the uh, to the pet cemetery when he took Rachel's body there in the movie version of Stephen King's Pet Cemetery? So Steve Masterson, Victor Pascal, Judd Crandall. This is another one not to ask me because I don't remember Pet Cemetery. Okay. Quickly run through the answers for this one. Steve Masterson, Victor Pascal, Judd Crandall. Take another stab in the dark with this one. Uh, I'll go with uh, B, the Victor. Victor is incorrect. It was Steve Masterson. It was that one. Always with the bloody Stephen King. <laughs> oh, well, we're about to go into some more Stephen King, Dave. I'm <laughs> not surprised. Uh, 14. What is the name of Danny's imaginary friend in The Shining? Tommy? Tony? Or Toby? That, that's a real bitch of a question because they're all like so similar sounding. Just a teeny bit. And again, I know of those particular things, but the name is just the one thing. It's like, fuck out of all the things to remember of that. Um... And just so I have it clear, it was Tommy, Tony, and Toby. Correct. I'll go with Tommy. Tommy is incorrect. It was Tony. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. 
Moving on to 15. What is the name of the journalist played by Courtney Cox in the Scream movies? Gail Weathers, Gail Summers, Gail Hailstorm. Again, it was there and I've seen the movie, but... Which was the first one? Gail or Weathers. Run so... First, Gail Weathers, Gail Summers, Gail Hailstorm. Just the two. <laughs> Still have three lifelines left, and I will tell you, I'm a big fan of the Scream movies, so. Now I'm not surprised. I think I'll go ahead with another one of them, just to kind of pinpoint it. Okay, um... Uh, no, that's not a good clue. Um, hmm. uh, oh, crap. Because, um, like, I had a clue, and then I'm like, oh, wait, no, that doesn't eliminate any of them. Because I was going to say this would be a great... She would have a great name if she was, like... If she was doing, like, weather reporting, but then I'm like, oh, wait, no, that would work for all of them. Um, yeah, doesn't really kind of shift much of the thought on it. Oh, I don't know how to give you a hint on this one without giving you the answer. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit tricky with that particular one. Okay, for this one, I'm just going to give you the answer. It's Gail Weathers. It was Weathers. Because Summer came up and it's like, hmm. Was it there? It is just uh, so close with those particular ones. But no, the first time you said it, it was like, okay, you know, that makes sense for the character. But then you said Summers is like, oh, that makes sense in a bit. <laughs> yeah, that one was that one was kind of tricky. Uh, so sixteen. What is the name of the psychic medium who appears in the Insidious movie franchise? Eleanor Miller, Eloise Hawking, or Elise Rayner. First one with this one. Eleanor Miller is incorrect. It is Luis Rainier. The last one or B? It was the it was the last one, Luis Rainier. Uh, okay. It was, Rainier. it was either that or the one I said. Uh, okay, so what is the name of the doctor who is trapped in the room with Adam in the first Saw movie? Dr. Gordon Bellamy, Dr. Lawrence Gordon, Dr. L uh, Lawrence Emerson. And I got nothing with this. I'm not that uh, familiar with the Saw's movies i'll use another lifeline if it'll help um okay um this is going to be a two-part hint so I'll, I'll give you that his first name is lawrence so that takes one off the board and I will also tell you that his surname he does not share with the college. Uh, I don't know how helpful the second part is, though. Yeah, someone helps. Just if you wouldn't mind running through the answers again, just to verify it. Yeah, so I'll just go through the two that it could be, because one of them gets removed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the options you have left are Dr. Lawrence Gordon... Or Dr. Lawrence Emerson? He does not share his name with a college. I'll go with the B option. It's what's sticking in my head. Uh, so Gordon or Emerson? Uh, Emerson. Oh, 
damn it it's dr lawrence gordon oh it was that one because i was trying to think of particular colleges names but i don't specifically know that so that's why i was kind of like well i don't know how much is this this is going to help but emerson college is a college in boston so uh, so, uh, 18. In the Blair Witch Project, a team of filmmakers head to the forest of which Maryland town? Barnesville? Burkittsville? Brookview? I believe it's one last lifeline that I have. You have two left, but I am also going to tell you that I haven't seen the Blair Witch Project. I think I know the answer, but I'm not sure. Uh, okay. So, um, I mean, I could tell you what I think it is, but I can't guarantee it's right. Yeah, you have better knowledge. I'll take the chance on it. So, I would lean towards Barnesville, but I haven't seen this movie in 15 years, probably. So... You're better on my case, aside from seeing trailers and little snippets of things that mildly relate to it. Um, I'm not sure with your leaning and whatnot with that. My thought was going with C. Brookview? Yeah, I'll stick that one in. You want to go with Brookview? C? Yeah, see what it goes. Uh, we were both wrong. Yeah, that's the last option. It was Burkitt's view, or Burkittsville, sorry. Uh, so, 19. Uh, what are the characters of Grave Encounters doing at the abandoned asylum? Surveying it for redevelopment, looking for evidence of a murder, filming a television show. I once thought it was filming a television show, but I got I might have that confused with another movie con or uh, story. So we want to go with uh, filming a television show. Uh, yeah, go with that one. You are correct. And we move on to the final question, Dave. Question number twenty. In what year was the first A Nightmare on Elm Street released in cinemas? Any options for that one? Or just oh, case sorry. I, I forgot to read them to you. Uh, 1984, 1985, 1983. Yes, the original one. Yeah. You still have a lifeline left if you'd like to use it. Yeah, I've got the last one and I've made it to the end, so might as well use it just to confirm or help out. Uh, I think this is one where I just kind of have to give you the answer because I don't know how to whittle it down anymore. Because it's just four or 84... 84, 85, 83 were the options. Okay, around those years. Yeah, there it's literally three years back to back, and I'm like, I don't know how to look, cut this down. It's 1984. It was for like the it immediately jumped out, but I think just because of a joke that I know of that a particular year that someone used, but it's like, is that the case with the movie, or am I just getting that confused? No, uh, it was 1984, so you got 10 out of 20 correct, so 50%, which is actually quite a good score, considering you don't really watch horror movies. In most cases, it's I either watch specific clips of them, or someone uses it as a joke and then mentions, it, mentions where it's from. Or I make you watch one. Also true. <laughs> That's happened a few times. I've just been like, Dave, you're watching Scream. Although, in all fairness, Scream isn't really... I mean, I guess it's kind of a horror movie, but... I mean, it's more of a horror comedy. In those sorts of cases, there. 
so that was that was definitely an enjoyable time at least for me i don't know how you felt about it it works it gave me a chance to kind of think get in the spooky mood kind of push into cases of man i gotta work on watching more hulu movies as well as finding that one particular one that i want to watch which is what i want to check out the 1980 something movie of the blob oh the blob that's yeah that's so there's the 58 version and there's the, there's the 88 version that's the modern version i remember seeing a clip someone mentioning about it and i was like oh okay because the 50s version is kind of a it's a 50s movie yeah but there's some great 50s movies that is true but yeah i i understand that like movies like that probably don't appeal to everyone it's a, it's a particular taste. It can definitely be appreciated. There's another particular one that comes to mind is The Birds. But I'm not sure if that's more 50s or if that starts to get into the 60s or 70s. I want to say The Birds is early 60s. 63 for The Birds. Mm -hmm. But still sort of fits within the same sort of uh, style around that time for films around that decade. Yeah, well, The Birds also has the benefit of being directed by Alfred Hitchcock, so, you know. Yeah. yeah. That that kind of helps things. Uh, yeah, so, uh, I do have a little prize here for you for completing the horror trivia thing. Radios. It's kind of assist with either being 50% or by just going to get half of it. Oh, no, you're getting the whole thing. Because <laughs> I don't know how to split it in half. Uh, I will drop off, uh, I don't know when, whenever you want me to come by. Uh, I have a Blu-ray copy of A Quiet Place for you. Are you familiar with the movie A Quiet Place? I believe so, but I think only because I remember seeing bits and pieces of its sequel. Oh, okay. Interesting. Well... Uh, so for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, it's a 2018 American post-apocalyptic horror film directed by John Krasinski, where basically um, there are these blind monsters that have really good hearing, and if they hear you, they hunt you. So it's very best not to make a sound, so I probably wouldn't last too long. That's also probably why it's called A Quiet Place, because you got to be quiet and shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. And there's, uh, yeah, there's one sequel already and another one coming. So, uh, Ooh, okay. I, yes, uh, Quiet Place 2 is out and 3 is announced for 2025 or something. Ooh. And apparently there's a video game coming too, so. Oh, jeez. Which I could be kind of fun, but I don't know. Anyway. Is it in concept but it's a question of how they're kind of going to work with it i'm assuming it'll be very much like a resident evil style kind of survival horror game oh dear god i need to work on getting those particular things together i completely forgot i have a bunch of resident evil games to play <laughs> all right well uh i think that's going to be about it for this time i've been paul and i've been dave